So now we're ready to begin the procedure. First, if the patient's awake, we should go ahead and put some pain medicine in. So here's the lidocaine we drew up. This is a perfect time to find the vessel again. And there's our artery, and there's our vein. So first we're going to make a little skin wheel. We'll inject a little lidocaine. And then we can go in at about the angle that we're going to go with our actual introducer needle. And you can see this needle going in. We're going to pull back, make sure we're not in the vessel. And we're going to inject some uh, lidocaine. I'll inject a little bit less because it's a mannequin. Then we can cap this needle. So when we're thinking about the ideal position of where we go with our needle, I like to go in about 30 to 45 degrees, and you want to imagine that the distance you're going away from the transducer is the same distance that the vessel is down. So if we look at this, we can see that our vessel is at about 2 centimeters. So bevel up, we're going to have to go about 2 centimeters away. When I hold this, I want to make sure that I can always have negative pressure on the, um, on the needle. So I hold it like this, and then I use my thumb to pull. So I push forward with my thumb, and you'll see it better when it's actually in the tissue. Can you just show that one more time, Richard, with your hand? Ooh, perfect. And then I push forward with the thumb. And that way you can always see it when you have flashbacks. So we now have the vessel centered on the screen. We're going at about 30 to 45 degrees, about two centimeters away, aimed at that vessel, and we're going to break the skin where we created the wheel. And then we're always pulling back. And you can see the needle inside the vessel. And so now that we're inside the vessel, you're going to want to rest your palm on the patient. That way your hand is steady. You make a little unscrewing motion, like that. And then we're ready to put our guide wire in. And it should go pretty easy. Usually you only need to put it in about 10 to 15 centimeters. Now that our guide wire is in, it's time to withdraw the needle. We'll put the needle aside so we don't poke ourselves. And then we'll confirm placement. You'll want to call your attending over and make sure they can see. And we'll make sure that we're inside the vessel. So one more time, we're going to find that vein. And there we have our wire. It appears to be inside the vein. Can you also just show how uh, we use longitudinal view as well? So if you're not sure, what you can do is you can turn it. Let me just... It, the mannequin's a little slippery, Dr. Mandari, but I think I can get it. Yeah, so it may be hard to get on, on this one, but we'll see if we can. And there we are inside the vessel. And if you pull back, yeah. you can follow the wire as it goes in. So ideally, we can get it in perfect longitudinal view and you can see the wire going into the vein. Uh, there we are, Dr. Mandar. There we go. Let's see. You can even pull this back a little bit if you want. Due to it being a mannequin, our interface isn't quite yeah. as good. But if you look right there, you can see where the J-tip is. I don't want to come all the yeah. way due to the interface yeah. not being great. But now that we think we're in, there's a few things we can do. You know, I think it's a vein, but I'm not 100% positive. I mean, it looks blue, 
it didn't pulsate, but could we still be in an artery? Is there anything we can do now? So there's a couple of things. One, we can check with the ultrasound to make sure it looks like it's in the vein. But if we had misidentified the vein from the beginning, we're still out of luck. We can pull it back, try to see that we have our J-tip to make sure that we're actually inside the vein. Still not sure, maybe I was in the artery all along. So there's a few things in the kit that we can use to help us. So one is this transducer. We can uncoil this, and we can use this to check. But in order to do that, we need to exchange our wire for a catheter. So on the back of this needle, you can just show what you grabbed again. It's an additional needle, and this is a catheter that's on a needle, so we just pull it off. So it's just the blue catheter. And we just need this catheter. So what you can do is you can just replace this guide wire with this catheter. So we'll just put this on. Now this being a mannequin might not thread quite as easily, but we'll just push it in. And now if we wanted to, we could pull up this needle Pull out the wire. Pull out the wire, I mean. Excuse me, Dr. Menard. And now we're in, should be inside the vessel. So making sure that I keep my thumb over this. We can check to make sure that we are inside the vessel by holding up this manometer. So the blue fluid should come, if we hold it down like this, and then we strain it up, it should not come spurting out the top because our CVP should be lower than this height. If it does, we're not in the right place. Alternatively, we can hook this up to a CVP measurement on the monitor and we can actually make sure that we have the appropriate waveform. We're going to reinsert our guide wire now. Now that we have our wire in, the only other way that we could check is we could draw an ABG or a VBG depending and see what it is. That's not so great because your PO2 can vary depending upon if you're in a septic shade or what kind of shock you're in. So I think this is a more sure way to go. So the next step is dilating. So we need our scalpel and we need a dilator. During this step, to minimize bleeding, I like to keep my palm right on where the patient, the wire is, like this. And this also gives me full control of the wire. So even when the adrenaline is going and my hands are shaking, I still have control of this. So the important thing to do is measure, make sure that the angle that you introduced the needle, so that was the 30 to 45 degree angle, is the same angle that you put in the dilator, which will be the same angle that you put in the catheter. That will create a nice even track for you. So first things first. Let's create a skin name. So there's our scalpel. I like to put that flat part of the blade. Let me see if I can just get closer. I like to put that flat part of the blade right where the wire is. And then go down and make a little stab. And now I want to make sure that there's no skin tag not allowing it to move. So I make sure this can move freely. Next we're ready for our dilation. So stabling, stabilizing with one hand, I go ahead and put my dilator on. Then I like using a little underhanded approach. So I grab it like this, grab it underhand, and with a little twisting motion, 
I pushed in my dilator. Very gently, because this mannequin's made out of plastic. And now, how deep are you going with your dilation? So you don't have to go all the way. We'll probably have to go a little further on this mannequin than a normal person, but you don't need to hub this thing. You actually don't need to go into the vessel. We're just breaking the skin and we're breaking up the muscle so that we can actually get this in. And the whole time, you go back and forth on your wire and the wire should move very freely, in and out, in and out. And then we're gonna pull this dilator out. And there's some other techniques. You can twist a little bit if you're not sure. You can twist and pull. And then now, there will be some bleeding. So I hold pressure there with one hand. And I'm ready to see if we're ready for the catheter. This whole time I have the wire in my hand. I'm not letting go. I'm watching where the wire is. So now we're going to put the catheter over the wire. This is what we call the Selinger technique. And this is why that brown port was not capped before. Exactly. We kept it open because now we want to watch the wire come through the other end. And there it comes. And now I'm going to grab the wire here so I can let go with my left hand. And then we're going to slide the catheter in, never letting go of the wire. And can you just talk about uh, how deep you're inserting that catheter? Well, Dr. Mandari, that depends upon the patient and depends upon what site you're using. So if you're going to use the femoral vein, that would be about 20 centimeters. For the right IJ, I would probably do about 16 centimeters to start. Right subclavian, 17 centimeters. Left IJ, 18 centimeters. And left subclavian, 20 centimeters. Now those are just places to get you started. You need to look at the patient in front of you to judge how far it's going to go. So now that we have our wire out, I'm going to set that aside. You want to make sure that your thumb is covering the port so that we don't introduce any air. We can then attach our last cap. Then we're going to draw back first and then flush each of our lines. So squirt out a little saline. And you don't really need to draw much back. Draw a little back. And then we're going to flush. Draw a little back. We'll make sure the blue is all the way up so that we don't put air in. And then we're going to flush. And same thing for the last one. Make sure the mm -hmm. air is up so we're not introducing so you're air. Holding it vertically just to make sure that there's no air being introduced. And then we're going to flush. It all flushes very easily. So now we're going to go about securing this. So you have this little blue piece and this little white piece. Can you show how you attach that again? So there's a blue piece and a white piece. We're going to put this over the vessel. So the white piece on first. White piece on first. And the blue one snaps on. Blue piece snaps on. And then now we are ready to secure it. So in this kit, we have a hemostat. And we have a needle. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this down. If your patient's awake, it might be nice to just give a little lidocaine before you do this. So a big bite. And we're going to attach this. You have to attach all four of them so that this line does not move. I sometimes see people only attach three, and that's not correct. And then we can go ahead and tie this off. You can hand tie this. You can instrument tie this, however you prefer. And by four stitches, you mean one, two, three, and four. Yes, Doctor. All four. It has to all go in. So that's one. All right. 
So just assume that we've sutured all, all four. I'm not going to do it for time purposes. But now we need to clean up all the excess blood. And this is just because dried blood can oftentimes be a nidus for infection. So a, a last clean afterwards is always helpful. We'll make sure that the area is dry. And now that we have our biofilm, we need to make sure that goes over the area of insertion. And in this mannequin, we would need a second tegaderm to make sure that the entire thing is covered underneath. We can now attach the rest of our dressing. This has the date. And this can loop around. And for this guy, I would probably put another tegoderm right here to cover up this part of the catheter as well. And then we're done. So now that we're in, there's a few ways we can confirm this. One, we need a chest x-ray. We want to make sure we don't have a pneumothorax and we want to make sure that our central line is in proper position. The other way to make sure that we're actually in a vein at this point is to use some agitated saline. Get ready to squirt in the vessel and have the attending put his probe on the patient's heart. We can then make sure this comes into the right side of the heart appropriately. We can also use the ultrasound to make sure we don't have a pneumothorax while we're waiting for chest x-ray. Now that we're in and clean, you want to make sure you throw away your sharps, clean up your site, and call for housekeeping. <laughs> Excellent. I um, think that's about it. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Dr. Maynard. <laughs>